afternoon, change makers and social innovators all around the world and across Africa. We welcome you to yet another amazing edition of the Social Impact Webinar. We are super pumped about every edition of the Social Impact Webinar. I am your amiable host. My name is Oluwatoi Banjo, Program Director at Ideation of Africa. And I warmly welcome you to this awesome edition. It is themed positioning to attract opportunities for social enterprises and NGOs. So let's do a quick thing to this morning. Type in the comment section where you're joining us from. Let us meet you. We'd love to love to have you introduce yourself, share in the comment section your name, your organization, where you're joining us from, and what your expectations are for this mm -hmm. webinar. We already have in the studio our quintessential Prof. Omotola the Great. Um, she's pumped and ready for us this afternoon. Thank you so much, um, Lady Yinka. I see you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. So we want to read from many other change makers tuned in this afternoon or from any part of the world. It may not be afternoon, wherever you are. It may be morning. It may be night time. Whatever the time zone is, we warmly welcome you and we say thank you for joining in. Thank you, Lady Yinka. So Lady Yinka is joining us all the way from Lagos, Nigeria. And we want to read from many other organizations, she, or many other um, change makers and organizations. So share your name, the, the name of your organization and your expectations for today's webinar. All right, without further ado, I will move on to again, welcome Prof Omotola the Great. All right. Prof Motola is a Nigerian by birth. Um, she is a global citizen, citizen by destiny. Prof Motola the Great is a social worker by training, a social good engineer by choice. She has a zeal for creating and designing programs and systems that work for the greater and common good of society. Prof Motola the Great is passionate about entrepreneurship education, social work education, Nonprofit and management, personal and professional development, and youth development. She is a social impact strategist that specializes in nonprofit funding, a grant writer, and a personal development trainer. She has secured over $1.3 million for nonprofit organizations across the world. She holds a PhD in social work two master's degree in education psychology and social work, specializing in social enterprise development and management, and a bachelor's in social work with a double minor in leadership studies and psychology from Columbia College. She has a certificate in leadership development and training from Columbia College, a certificate in social entrepreneurship from George Warren Brown School of Social Work at Washington University in St. Louis, two mm -hmm. certificates in sustainable business strategy and entrepreneurship essentials from Harvard Online Business School, two certificates in grant writing from grant writing and funding. Prof. Motala is a social work professor teaching interviewing and counseling skills, intro to social work, senior seminar at University in Minnesota as well. Prof. Motala is a John Maxwell team coach, trainer, speaker, and speak spe disc specialist. She has been featured on Forbes, UNICEF, and grant writing and funding podcasts, and has won local, national, and international awards for her work in the social impact sector. She is highly sought after international speaker and trainer. She has guest lectured at the University of Colorado, Berda, Columbia College, Southern Illinois University, Cabo and OI University. She has won numerous awards and fellowships, some of which include being a Congressional Fellow, Starting Block Fellow, Social Innovation Fellow, 30 Under 30 Award, and was seen Scholar. Prof. Motala is the lead consultant at the Fundy Magnet Limited Company, which was established in 2020. And the Fundy Magnet is a full service coaching and consulting firm that works with individuals and nonprofits passionate about social impact to develop and manage the organization structure, processes, and systems. 
They prefer propel position and power nonprofit founders to build or run profitable and sustainable organizations or programs that exponentially multiply their impact. Prof. Motola has trained over 10,000 social impact makers to start, build, and expand their projects, programs, and organizations in over 45 countries online and offline. She has helped generate over $1.3 million in funding for social impact. Without further ado, let's warmly receive Prof. Amatala the Great. Prof. Amatala, good morning from our end, or good afternoon. You're muted at the moment, Prof. Amatala. Good morning, good morning from me. Good it's 6 a.m. here, and good afternoon to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you Wonderful. so much. We're Wonderful. super pumped and excited about this edition, and we can't wait for the wealth of wisdom we're drawing from. Um, of Thank course, you. this um edition as always is is segmented into into two parts the first part we will have prof motola do a thing share with us robustly about the um topic for today's um webinar and then we would have the question and answer segment where we would receive questions already curated questions and of course receive questions from our live audience all right prof motola over to you it's your show you enjoy you. yourself Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or wherever you are joining us from, or whenever you watch this um, stream. I'm really excited that you chose to invest in your growth and your organization's growth as well. I always tell people before I start any training or any <laughs> um, speaking engagement that I am not impressed that you're here or that you're watching this. What will impress me greatly is when, what, when you go and implement what you learn. And so, clap for yourself that you're here but beyond that determine and, and already propose in your mind that you're going to learn one or two things that you're going to implement and i don't want you to impl implement it next month or next week within the next 24 to 48 hours so that's the intention that you should use as you're listening to me i want you to have your note or your digital um, notebook ready to take notes, to ask yourself questions. And I hope that by the end of this training, you have a lot of takeaways and you have a lot of action step on what to do to help you and your organization grow. Thank you to Edition of Africa for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here with you. I consider myself family. And so I'm, I always believe that I'm in the midst of family whenever I get this opportunity to be here. And so without further ado, um, again, I try to make this presentation very straight to the point the like what you need no no fluff at all it's like just going to the basic and then from there we are going to move on to the question and so i always like to have an agenda ready and so this is what we are going to cover um today so our agenda is going to focus on why your organization matter because a lot of times i have I've seen this tendency in nonprofit way over the past 10 years that i've being a, a nonprofit consultant and um, coach, there's this tendency where we undervalue who we have as a nonprofit individual. We think that we are not essential. We think that we don't matter, but we matter in the scheme of things. We have so much to do for our country, for our nation, for our continent, for our city, for our state, wherever your locality is, you are important. And so it's very important for us to help you to know that you matter and to remind you of that. So I'm going to go over that. Then also we're going to talk about the types of opportunity to position yourself for. Most people just think of funding only as the op opportunity when you think of how can we attract opportunities for nonprofit or social enterprise. But there are so much more beyond just funding in terms of what can be available for you. Then the third thing on our agenda today is going to be how to prepare for type of opportunities. The second thing is type of opportunities to prepare for. And then the third thing is how to prepare for opportunities. So I have two slides. One is going to focus on the SWOT analysis, and then one is going to be on the attitude that you need to actually prepare. It's not enough for you to do a SWOT analysis, but what kind of attitude will get you from where you are to where you need to be from point A to point B. And then the six M's needed to stay ready for opportunity. Like, you know, that quote that says that when opportunity comes, it's already too late to plan. And so these M's, we're going to break down what, what you need and why they matter as you think forward into the vision and the plan and the goals that you have for your organization and the community and the people that you serve as well. And then we're going to also dive into the question. So my um 
presentation might be short, but I always love to go into the questions because from there we can even get more substance and we can really focus on your own specific need as well. And so um, I hope that again, take notes. Um, if something comes to mind, jot it down. If you have questions, jot it down. We'll take the opportunity to ensure that um, we can definitely um, answer your questions today. And if we cannot answer everything today, after the call, if they send it to me, the organizers can send it to me and I'll be happy to respond as well. And so no fears, like no question is out of place. No question is stupid. And so prepare your mind and be ready for whatever questions that come to mind and don't be afraid to share as well. Okay. And so why do you matter? Like as a nonprofit, like I said before, we, pray, we play a critical role. You are important to the scheme of things like nations, destinies, legacies, generations to come, generations that are already living presently. They are tied to your purpose. I always tell people, you can have chosen to do anything else with your life, but you chose to be in the nonprofit sector. You chose to care enough to want to dedicate all of some part of your time, your energy, your resources into making life better, into making community better. And so you matter. Because again, as nonprofit, we are links, we are bridges, and sometimes we are the last line of defense. When the government fail, when um, organizations, for-profit organization fails, and you can think of it for those of you that are within the African continent, you know that we've seen a lot of failures, right? From our government, from our leaders. And when that happens, the box sometimes stops with us. And so don't ever think of yourself like, oh, I don't matter, we don't matter. We're just trying to do something little. Whether it's one person that you're changing their life for the better, whether it's one community, it is very critical what you do. So I want you to take yourself seriously. And I want you to position yourself right from your mindset that I matter, I contribute to the world, what I'm doing, it's a matter of life and death. A lot of you, you serve people who need really, really serious up, who when they've lost all hope, you might be the last line of defense for them. So again, I want you to think in that kind of mindset. That's the kind of way I want you to view yourself. Because guess what? Self-image matter. And I know as an individual, you're aware of that. How you think about yourself, how you feel about yourself, that can affect your productivity, right? It can affect how you show up in the world, your confidence. So also as an organization, you're an entity. You're a living being as, as a nonprofit. So again, your self-image matter, how you view yourself, how you view your role. It's very, very important for your progress and being able to attract opportunity and sort of like prepare for it and position for it as well. And so don't take that lightly. So if you were to think of your the image of your organization, and I would like some responses in the chat. How do you, on a scale of one to 10, how confident are you in being a solution provider? How confident are you where one is zero and you don't feel confident at all? And 10 is like you are like super confident and you know that you know your place in the world, you know the roles that you are playing, and you know that you are changing life and, and transforming life and saving life for the better. On a scale of one to ten, where will you place yourself as an organization, at, as an organism? Wonderful. I see champion Yinka, or Lady Yinka. She said a 10. I love that. I am so glad. Like, this is like rare, like that the first answer, someone will say a 10. And so I'm really happy. And this is a good way to start. And I would love to hear from others as well. So again, you play a crucial role. So don't ever undermine yourself by limiting your self-image and believing that you don't matter and that what you do is not important in the long scheme of things. It is very, very, very important. Then again, as nonprofit, we play, again, all of us, we are coming from different countries, different part of the world, different, and but yet there are some things that might be similar in what we do to the population and the community that we serve. And so some of that, maybe for some of you, you're focused on social welfare. So if that's your case, you provide critical social services to vulnerable populations, such as food assistance, housing, childcare, and much more. For some of you, you focus on education and skill development. This can be educational initiative, vocational training, scholarship, literacy, and helping people to really change their family history, change their family history for the better. Maybe some of the people that you serve, this is the first time they will ever graduate from secondary school or high school, go to college, or even have a chance of, of having a livable um, work 
um, or wage that they are earning. Then also for some, we focus on healthcare. We are, might be the primary health provider. We might provide medical research, support for medical treatment, disease prevention, improvement of public health and well-being. I know of many organizations, especially when it comes to issue of maternity health and children and obesity and like starvation, like and the health issues that it prepares. A lot of nonprofits are at the forefront of fighting these issues and breaking them down. So again, what you do matters in the in the skin of things. No matter how big or small you think you are right now, you are important and you play a crucial role in the development of our world. You're standing in gap for people, for nations, for family. And it's so important that you remind yourself of that and you, you use that self-image every day. Know that you matter. Tell yourself that what you do matter and you're excited to contribute more to the world. And as for some, you focus on advocacy and awareness. Your goal is to advocate for specific issues, raise awareness about social, environmental, political, issues and also promote positive change within uh, your community and the nation at large. And so it's very, again, it's very important that you realize that you are, as nonprofit, we work in different industry across whatever nation or whatever continent that we are in. And so you are critical. When the government fail, when the private sector fail, we are the last line of defense. So you really, really matter. And again, your self-image is important because how you view yourself, how you see yourself, like before you even open your mouth, before you share anything on social media, put something on your website, if you, you have a stinking feeling or stinking um, thinking about who you are, what you do and your place and your role in the world is going to affect the kind of um, pos um opportunity you attract. It's going to affect whether or not you get all the resources that you need to be able to do your incredible work and carry out the vision and the mission for why you exist in the first place. And so again, never ever forget that you matter. Never ever forget the roles, the critical and crucial roles that you are playing as you work for the good of the population and the community that you serve as well. Okay. And so moving on, we're now going to focus on the nitty gritty, which is like, what are the type of opportunities that you can prepare for um, as an organization, as an entity? And so they are different from, again, it's not just money. There is so much more than money, but yes, more, maybe 40% of, of the opportunities might be in one way or the other related to funding, but there are other ones that are not related to funding, but they all matters and they all work together for your good as well. So think of it like a tree, right? Think of a tree where you plant the seed. So the seed is registering your organization, having the idea to solve a problem, right? And so when you put that, when you when you plant the seed, then you, you, you have to water it, right? You have to read out the things that are not there. You have to fertilize it. And so there are a lot of opportunities to grow your organization, to, have, to be fertile, to be healthy, and to be able to carry out the mission and do it successfully. And so for some of these opportunities, they involve grants. So grants can be government or private foundation. I know currently like Art Foundation in Nigeria, by July 31st, which is like this coming Tuesday, they have an opportunity, and I'm sure Edition of has already shared it in their newsletter and across their social media that is closing. They have a change maker challenge, and they are looking for both social enterprise, for profit, and non profit organizations that they want to fund to ensure that they can carry out their mission if you are within the guideline of the three to four areas that they want to, they are interested in, in funding. And so that's one opportunity of the private foundation that is providing grant opportunity for you. And grants are things that you don't pay back in money when you get the money, but you pay back in the work you do, the good you do, how you change things positively for the population or the community that you're serving. Then also there are government funding as well. And it's sometimes rare in some of the African, but they're still available. So think of it every year, at least twice a year, the US embassy, we have a US embassy in Nigeria, they have at least two grant opportunities for nonprofit and social enterprises across different countries across the world. Nigeria and other African countries always qualify for this. And it ranges from $5,000 to like $250,000 that you have opportunity. So twice a year, they have two, um, two timelines. They, they, they do a call out and they also have their own specific areas that they're focusing on, which can also be in alignment with some of these things that we shared about social welfare, education, skill development, healthcare and advocacy. So those are some type of grant opportunities that can that, that are available for you to look into and position yourself for in order to be and for you to position for grant. Usually you have to have some paperwork. Most of the time, 99% of the grant, whether it's 
from for profit or from public organizations or from government, they require you to be registered. You need to be registered. So for you to position for opportunity, you have to be a legit organization. Like I said, you are an entity. If you're just doing it on the side as a side thing and you don't get the legal process in place, then your opportunities are going to be very, very limited. And the pool of resources, the pool of opportunity is going to shrink. So I always tell people, even if you are not sure if you want to do this for the rest of your life, if it's just for a season, it doesn't matter. Get the right um, registration for your particular continent, for your particular country, for your particular state, because in the long run, it's going to open you up for more opportunities. So for instance, with Act Foundation and the grant that is closing, the, the grant circle that is closing by in the next three to four days, you have to be registered. They have specific things that they're looking for. This is not just for individuals. So again, beyond just your passion, you have to also have your organization as an entity separate from yourself. And that can also bring many opportunity. Also, there are individual, for, um, um, there are grants for individuals. So for you as the change maker, as the visionary, sometimes some organizations, they don't care whether your nonprofit is, but again, it's very little and it's very restricted. And again, the people that apply for it, it's a lot of people, but not enough fun to go around. So when in doubt, I always tell people, it's better to be safe than sorry. It's better to have it and not need it than to now need it and not have it. And so again, let me say that again, it's better to have it and not need it than to not need than to need it and not have it. So again, just over prepare yourself, get all the right documentation, get your taxes things filled, get your financial review, and make sure that you have all of this documentation so that when opportunity comes, you're not running elter scatter. You don't have to miss it and wait another year because you don't have all your documentation ready and in one place to use and upload for that particular opportunity. Then we have sponsorship. So sponsorship is different from grant. So again, like I said, grant is from private foundation, from government. And, but for sponsorship, it's more related to um, corporate and individual. So corporate, like a for-profit organization. So think of, let's say, Coca-Cola. They also have a grant and sponsorship um, making ham. And so what they do is like every year they have a specific process. And then again, they today have specific criteria and areas that they are passionate about. And so they are willing to either sponsor your, let's say you have an event, you want to raise awareness about um, childhood obesity or hunger or mortality rates and how it's killing mothers and young children. They can sponsor your event. They can pay for the location, pay for, they can give you drinks. They can give you other things to help your event as well. At the same time, they can also provide grant for you as well. And so that's what sponsorship means. Like they can, if it's going to cost you one million naira to do this event, to raise this awareness, they can do that for you. And they can provide you the money if you send the proposal and then they will sponsor the event. But you have to have them as a partner and share their logos and other things that they might require that is in alignment with what you stand for as well. And then on the individual level as well, there are individuals who are, they call themselves philanthropists and they are always looking for a cause to suffer. They may not have the time and the energy to do the work, but maybe they love children, but they, they cannot start their own nonprofit. So they can live through you, through your organization and say, you know what, I don't have the time and the energy, but I care about this issue. I'm willing to sponsor 50 children, 100 children. I'm willing to sponsor this event or program that you have. And I know that I'm going to be a partner in your progress in making impact in this area as well. And so again, there might be certain requirements. Again, for sponsorship, most um, for-profit, they require you to be registered as well. They want to ensure that you have the financial know-how to manage money, to budget wells. They want to, some might want to know whether you already have support system, you have partners in place already that's going, that's going to help you be a small team. So all of these things are important. So again, you need to check for, have, create a checklist so that's of, okay, what are the basic things that are needed or required for grant or for corporate sponsorship? And again, the basic thing is registering your organization, having a bank account that is not in just your own name. So that again, there's no issue, like they can trust you, they can trust your process, having your board members, um, having the right team members on the right seat to help with the different programs and aspects of your organization and making sure that you're keeping track of things and you're evaluating yourself and, and evaluating your progress as you work on your goals and the 
programs that you do. Then we also have donations. So donations can be cash or in kind. And so these are opportunities again for people, individuals complain to give to you. And so for some, let's say you are in health, like that's what you focus on, or even in education, I know of companies that they um, create textbooks, they create exercise book, and every year some of them have the mission of donating a million exercise book or 500,000 textbook to um, non-profit or schools or children that need it. So you can become a partner with those kind of organizations or individuals as well and get those in-kind donations. I, I had a client that our mission this year was to get over 1 million um, exercise book given to children in low-income communities who hardly have any writing or um, 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 materials to use. And so far, she has crossed more than half. And we're just in <laughs> um, July. And already she has gotten both cash and in-kind donation. Right now, like a month ago, she signed a partnership with um, a, a big um, printing press. And they're willing to donate like... 300,000 notebooks or exercise book to help out with that goal on that mission. And, and so again, so these are kind of opportunity that you can attract. So depending on what you do, you need to create a list for yourself to say, okay, yes, we might need money for it, but beyond money, what other things do we need in kind that people can donate to us, that people can give to our organization? And so if you're into um, healthcare, there might be medical supplies that you might need, whether that's drugs, um, equipment, and things like that. And so those can be things that you can definitely um, assess and get donated. You can sometimes it can be food, raw materials, uh, non-perishable food, and things like that, or hygiene items and things like that as well. And so again, there are a lot of opportunities. So don't just think money, because again, when people, most people, when they think of non-profit and opportunity, just think money, money, money. There are so many ways that your budget of five million can go down to just needing 500,000 500, in cash because you can get other things through in-kind donation and partnership. And so that's very critical that you create a list for yourself. After you have your numeric budget of, okay, this is the amount of money we need to run this program or this project, look at your budget critically and say, you know what, okay, out of this budget, what organization already exists in my locality, whether that's in your city, in your state, in your region, in your country, in your continent, that I can partner with, we can provide in-kind donation. We don't have to go and buy it ourselves, but they might donate it. I remember I used to run um, a particular event some years ago when I was still living in Nigeria. And every year we used to like to go to like all the marketplaces and neighborhoods that have beggars and people that were handicapped and sleeping on the road and begging for money and everything. And so it's usually around February and our budget always increase every year because we like to feed like, a, we like to feed a thousand of them and provide hygiene packs for them. But guess what? The last one that we did, our budget was about 5 million. And we only had like maybe 1 million in cash at that point. And so we started thinking, okay, what do we need to do? And then um, I found out about an, a person who was producing a movie, like through film, females and all. And so um, what we did was to now say, we went to speak to the person, you know, you're, you're producing this movie. Nobody really knows your name out there and all. Will you be willing to sponsor this project? We're going to create a big banner. We're going to have music and a bus dancing and going to like 10 different strategic locations around your state and being in the marketplace and, share, and sharing food and materials and things like that. Will you be willing to um, give us your film crew and um, uh, and camera person to come around and take our picture? We want to document this. So we didn't ask them for money. We asked them for the expertise they already have. Because like to me, they could have given, I could have asked for one million and that would have been great. But that documentation, having professional camera, professional videoing, photography and everything was more important to me because we still use those images five years later. Like those images are so great and professional. We still use it over and over again. And so for me, that matter because if we were, we were to pay for it out of our own pocket, we would just be bankrupt in that sense of this. So that was one example. Another example was we went to Indomie toothpaste, like close up and some of those um, um, organizations that produce like um, toothbrush um, and also like things like sweet and biscuit, because we're creating a kit for them that beyond the 
jollof rice and fish or turkey that we give to them that they can eat on that day. We wanted to give them something because a lot of them they don't have to, they don't have time for hygiene and those kind of things. We want to provide something that were non-perishable for them to still use over the next couple of days or week as well. And so we got donations of indomie boxes, donation of biscuit, donations of toothpaste and toothbrush and things like that. And so even though the whole budget was five million naira, all we needed in real cash was one million. Every other thing, the remaining four million was covered in in-kind donation. Rice were donated, chickens were donated, all kinds. Of, so we just went above and beyond and got as many people involved as possible to say, this is our target. This is what we need to make this number of plates of rice. And, and that's how we got all of these things sorted as well. So again, don't just think in terms of cash, cash, cash alone. There are a lot of opportunities. Actually, again, if this is the first time that this organization is finding out about you, it, you can start at first to show like you and your value by asking for in-kind. And then after building that relationship, can now go beyond it to now get cash. This same person who was this producer, after that initial project, guess what? He came on as a board member and every month he, 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 he himself personally started giving us 300,000 era per month as his contribution to supporting the mission and the work we were doing. But again, I didn't ask him for money first. I asked him for something as in kind and he saw the level of our impact and what we did and he got inspired to be part and he even introduced two of his friends to come and to, to come and donate to us. And again, so again, that's how you can position yourself for opportunity. So don't just think short term and you just want the money, money, build the relationship. If you can get some things in kind, great. If it's just cash that is possible, great. Start small as you're thinking big and you want to grow big as well. And so that's another type of opportunity that you can prepare yourself for. Then also there is human cap capacity. Because again, a lot of us as non-profit, again, like I said, some of us, this is not a full-time thing. For most of us, if we're lucky and this is like this only thing we're doing, that's wonderful and great. But I know that more than half of us, we have other things that we're trying to do to make ends meet. Why we still, even though this will be our first passion, we don't have the bandit to focus on that right now. So you need people. And that's where volunteerism comes in. That's another opportunity. There are people who have expertise, who have what you need. Like, so for instance, right now within my own organization, we have somebody that is a videographer and does all of our like animations and video promotion. This person is a student. He has been volunteering with us for over like two years now. He's like a law student, but just has a passion and like expertise in video creation and animation and voiceover and things like that. And it was through Instagram that we met. He just said, I like what you do. I like your mission. I like your vision. I would like to donate my expertise and my and my talent. And I would like to um, intern for your organization. And that's how we got this person to volunteer for us. And anytime we need something, we send it to him. Tell, okay, this is, that I have this. I'll give you, this is my timeline. I'll get it back to you at this time. If you need any correction, let us know. So that's an example, again, of one thing that you can do. Also, like in terms of volunteer, look at your organization. Do you have an organization chat? Do you have an organization structure? What is missing in terms of talent for you? Again, as the founder, as the visionary, you cannot do everything. You cannot do everything. So it is very important for you to think of, okay, who not out? Because a lot of us, if we try to wear all the hat and do everything, we are going to run out of time. We are going to run out of energy and we're just going to be jack of all trade master of none and we're not going to be excellent and give our best to everything so think of your own what is your own area of genius as the founder as the visionary as the director as the manager and then who else do you need again who not out that is the concept here who not out who else do you need on your team that needs to be in the room whether virtually or in person whether once a month whether weekly whether once a quarter you can make it make it work for your situation that can volunteer their, their time and their talent to support your mission and your vision to help you in carrying out your programs and your project effectively so again woman capacity is another opportunity that is out there and most of us we micromanage or mismanage the people that want to volunteer a lot of time a lot of non-profit they do a call out for an organization um for volunteers but the thing is like in the back end, our structure is nothing or rubbish. So there will be 50 people that will send, I'm interested, I'm interested, whether by comment or vice email, or however you told them to, um, like sort of like notify you if they are interested in working with you. Then two weeks later, three weeks later, one month later, you don't follow up. 
you don't even let them know you don't acknowledge that they said yes i'm interested in working for you so a lot of time we don't even know how to manage it because we don't have like processes in place so again when you're looking when you want to prepare for this kind of opportunity it's important that you have a job description again think about what do you need where are the gaps within your organization right now in terms of talent and um um woman capacity who do you need on your on, on your board what do you need in your room what do you need um, um on the table with you to help you get to the vision and the idea that you see for your organization and then craft a job description what is their role going to entail? How many hours per week, per month, per day do you expect them? What's the frequency? How often do they want to do it? Is there any orientation or training they need to do? Is there any certification they need to, to, to have before they can even start working for your organization? So you need to plan for those things so that when you now do the call out, you're not just starting from scratch because people can get upset. Like, can you imagine? Like, I, I, they said they needed help. I raised my hand. I sent the information and nobody got back to me. And then three months later, they're still saying they need help. They'll, they'll just ignore your call. So a lot of times we are the ones that we push people away because we don't have the right processes. We don't have the right things in place to welcome them for that thing that we need. So it's not enough to have it in your head. You need to have it written down. You need to have it documented so that when those people sign up to support you to work with you to volunteer for your organization there's a protocol there's a process there's a system of, of how you get things done what you need to be get done and what they need to do you have targets that you're measuring measuring and things you can evaluate them on to say okay thank you you did this the first time you did this project this is what we want you to improve upon so you need to have all of these metrics in place because if you don't you are going to waste and mismanage the woman capacity potential that is possible for you as well then we also have partnership and so that's another type of opportunity so partnership again is not yes everything is partnership but specifically what i mean by partnership in this sense is like this can be with individuals and organization so this is like saying like for instance let's say you there are 50 non-profits in within your community and let's say for instance you are focused on um health care but you realize that even though your focus is on health care and you're helping in that specific area there are other things that you're population or the people that are in your program need but you don't have the capacity you don't have the means to create another program to solve their educational need or to solve their housing need or to solve their child care need so you can partner with another organization again see other nonprofits as partners not competitors because again and then when you're applying for grant and sponsorship a lot of these funders they're looking to make sure that you have established partnership you you have established uh, collaboration among other people that can complement the work you do. So instead of you having to start a new program entirely, you don't have to. You don't have to. You can partner. So stop thinking that there is competition. You can, and I'll give you again. I'll, everything I'm sharing with you, I have done it. I've tested it with myself, with my clients, and I've done it over and over again. So when I started my own nonprofit around in 2012. So we are over 10 years now <laughs> that, that we've been in existence. And so when we started, we were focused on education. We wanted to help secondary school students in Nigeria between SS1 and SS3. And because we realized like every year, like for, like before I started, like five years in a row, they keep saying 99% fail jam, 99% fail why. I'm like, this is, and then out of that 99%, 90% was coming from the public school system. And I'm like, something has to change. I, I believe that these students, they have the capacity. They are not dollars. They're like, we you just have to tweak the system a little bit. So the first idea we had was like, you know what, can we go in and, because one of the issues that then was like, is that there were a lot of strike or there are some schools that, let's say you, they, you're supposed to have six, sub, nine subjects in a semester or in a term. They only have five teachers. And I was a re it was a reality for me. I went to a public um, secondary school, Sandy Grammar School, if you, if you know Ibado. That's where I did my first, um, like from GS1 to GS3 of, of, of my um, secondary school education. And that was, I was even living in the body house. So that was my reality. Like we're supposed to have like 10 um, subjects. We only have six teachers or five six teachers. But 
when we were sitting for junior work, we had to sit for all of those exams. It didn't exempt us from all of those classes that we didn't have teachers for a year or times for. It was not part of it. So I knew that that was a big issue that was contributing to the failure rate. And so what we decided, you know, what if we partner with public secondary school? I don't want to create another private school. It's not going to serve the purpose. Let me fill the gap. So the proposal was, can we come in and the subject teachers that you don't have during those period will find qualify either recent graduates or students that are in their final year of um, university or polytechnic who can teach those students. Of course, like they shut us down and, and at first they thought that we were trying to like make them look back than everything. So I didn't give up. I went back again, back to the drawing, but okay, if they're not willing to let us do it during the school time, what if we do an after school thing? Like, okay, if they don't want us to come into the school to do this, let's create a center that people can come from, from two to six, and then we are going to help them in that. So the school was open to that. And then, because when we're doing the budget, you know, the idea was bring people who are experts to teach the student during the school time. But once that was shut down, our budget did not appoint for having a learning center that they could come to. And so for us, what we did now to say, we went back to the school, okay, can we use your school building? Because right now we don't have a center, but can we use your school building after school is over? School is usually over by 2 p.m. So from 2.15 to 6 p.m., can we use your classroom since you will not let us be in, in school from 8 to 2? And they said yes to that. And so for the first six months of our organization, we were in Abadina College. <laughs> and that was what well, that was our center. And we had students coming from 15 different schools within that particular local government and area to that Abadina College from 2.15 to 6 p.m. to come and learn those um, courses that they didn't have teachers for. So that's an example of a partnership. Another partnership, over time, as we grew as an organization a year or two later, we realized that beyond just academics, a lot of students, they had not so great leadership and moral values. A lot of them, they just want to become politicians and they believe in corruption and stealing money and just building their own house, like the example they were seeing in, 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 through our leaders and through our politicians. So there was another organization, so that's, um, um, so that's, um, um, and so they said, you know what? We are not focused on education and tutorial and anything, but we provide mentorship and leadership development. Can our students come to you Monday to Friday to your center to learn the academics? And then our own program is on weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, or mostly Saturdays from 8 to 4. We organize seminars and workshops and train children, um, um, students on leadership development, community service, and mentor them to be better and focus on emotional issues and work on their self-esteem and all. And so I said, yes, absolutely. At that point in our organization structure, we did not have the bandit to do our own curriculum for social mentoring or anything of that nature. So it was the perfect PFIT partnership to say, you know what? Yes, your student can come to our center from Monday to Friday. We will educate them. We will tutor them. We'll help them with their academics. And then our own students will join your students on Saturdays or Sunday, whenever you run your program. And they will learn about community development. They will learn about leadership. They will learn about self-esteem. And it was just a wonderful um, relationship and it again we complemented each other so they didn't have to look for extra funding to create a um, tutorial center that they didn't have or that was not their focus and their mission we didn't have to look for extra funding to create a program that was not in the initial vision that when we started our organization and we didn't have the bandwidth for so th those are examples of partnership that can work for your good that can work for for, for you and again the more partnership that you have that complements what you do that supports your mission and your vision guess what the more opportunity you can attract nationally locally and because again for most grant organization for most corporate sponsorship they will always ask you who are your partners who have you worked with before? Who are people that are going to support you in this project? So again, see that other nonprofit, they can see how they can complement your work. See yourself as you're working towards the same goal to make your community better, to save life, to impact life, to transform community for the better. And so ensure that when you you look at other nonprofit. Don't just see them as competition that you're competing for the resources. No, see how can we complement each other? How can we use what they're good at and what we are good at and exchange that value and create more value for that as we go forward? And so again, you create that win-win and you move from there. And then the last type of opportunity for the case of this and training is income generation. 
So again, and I know I like to say this in every training, but and I'll never get tired of it, and I hope you never get tired of it. Just because you're a non-profit, that's your status in terms of your legal standing. It does not determine what you can do or cannot do. You can still earn money. You can still make money as a non-profit. So again, beyond grant and sponsorship and donation, you as a non-profit, you can produce money. You can charge for your services. The, the only difference between you in a, a for-profit is in this sense is that for for-profit, all they care about is mostly profit and going back to their shareholders and all of that. But for you as a non-profit, the money you earn goes back. It's not for you as the funder, as your personal salary and your personal money. It goes back to your organization. Yes, you can use it to pay salaries for yourself and others. You can use it to do any other thing, but you can't just take it for yourself and say, this is my money. The money that you earn from your non-profit effort goes back into your organization budget, your organization account to further your mission and your vision. So as a non-profit, I don't want you to just think, yes, it's great that you're giving free service and you're providing but so let me use Ideation Hub as an example right now. So right now, this is a free webinar that you're on, right? But Ideation Hub as a social enterprise, as a nonprofit, they have income generating opportunities as well. They have programs that are like six months, three months, where you can pay for mentorship and have access to courses and coaches that, that will train beyond just the free one. So that's an example of a income stream, how Ideation Hub generates money. Another example that I always like to give is think of um, universities. Here in the US and even in other countries, there are private universities, there are public universities. So just because, like think of University of Ibadan, University of Lagos, think of whatever state you're living in. Just because it's a public government or federal or state, please tell me in the comment, didn't you still pay? Even though it's supposed to be free, right? Because it's government owned. Think of even the secondary schools. You still have to pay for some other thing, PTA, something. There's still something that they still generate money from. So just because we're a non-profit, it doesn't mean that you cannot earn money. You can earn money. So through products and services. And an example of the ones that we did for us as an organization, when we were in that, we did something. I was interested in farming. I love farming. Like when I had to choose in secondary school, whether it was technical drawing, food and not, I, I chose agri. And so now as an organization, we have um, one acre of land. And one of the things that we did on it was like, we built a place for like chicken rearing, so layers. So at one point we used to have over 1000 layers that laid eggs. So every day they produce egg. And so we sell those eggs. And so if they're normally sending a crate of egg for 800 Naira, we will say that it's a thousand Naira. And the value proposition we we're telling people is like, you know what? You're not just using this egg to do your bakery, to cook for your family, to make your yam and egg. You are also changing a life. You're helping us to educate a child. And so people were willing to pay extra because they know that their money is going to us, not just to fill my own pocket and make me rich, but I was putting it back into indirectly and directly into the community to help to change the future of some of the youth and the children that we had in that community. And so we used to have a situation where people would give us money in advance for the eggs before we even produce them. So again, as a nonprofit, you can do income generation. And the example of what we did was, again, over time, we had a vocational training to our own organization. And so, so another thing that we did was like, somebody gave us free training. They came to train our students on how to make liquid soap to wash plate and wash cloth. And so, and then all we just had to buy was material and the person trained them. And so once they trained them, we started making soap. So again, if they were selling a liquid wash to wash plate for 200 naira, we say our own is 500 naira or 400 naira or whatever the amount of money we wanted to charge. And again, it's the same value proposition. You're not just washing your dish dishes alone by buying our products and not buying the one from PNG or whatever other brand is out there. This is how you're changing the life of this student. This is how you're transforming things for the better. So again, you can create product and services that can serve the need of what you do. So another expertise that we had on our team was we had like some of our team members that they were good educators and trainers. They've gone to South Africa, like African Leadership Academy to learn excellent curriculum from different things and improve teaching. So at one point we started offering a service where we would train public teachers and private school teachers in secondary, primary and secondary school. So we charge 50,000 Naira per week 
like a Saturday from nine to five for them to come to our center to learn and they'll get materials. We do some role plays and everything. And so that used to be another income generating stream for us to be able to do that. And then because of that, people got to know about us and then they started referring us to other schools, other teachers. So again, that's another way that you can generate opportunity for yourself. Is there something that you're skilled at or a team member is skilled at that you can produce low cost but with high quality, a service or a product, and then you can now use that to position yourself to get funds. Like another one of one of my clients, what she does is like she creates like planners and she creates um what do you call it? Like gift, you know, think of end of year, Christmas, like, you know, a lot of companies, they want to give their staff something a, like bonus beyond just the money that they earn. So she sent proposals to organizations say, you know what, can you, will you be willing to buy 100 or 50 piece of these um, kit I created that you can gift to your staff members as this, this is how this is going to support the work we do to help people that are sick. Another one of my clients, she makes a direct so she make a direct like and make clothes and everything and then she sells it and she uses the money that she gets from that to help um children that are sick and need help in terms of like um treatment and drugs and things like that as well so again the possibilities are endless for you the possibility are endless for you in terms of what is possible for you and what you can do um, when it comes to in income generation so these are just a few type of opportunities that you can position yourself for as an entity and you can definitely use that to grow yourself and grow your organization okay all right and then now um we're moving to now like how to now position for how to prepare for this opportunity so the first is you need to do a SWOT analysis and again i know most of you are familiar with it but again it's about repetition space repetition over time and actually doing it the question is when was the last time you did the SWOT analysis of your organization i would like to see some um respond in the chat can you remember was it three months ago six months ago a year five years ago or you cannot even remember at all so again this is something i'll say you should do every quarter there are four quarters in a year every quarter assess and evaluate your organization are we growing are we stagnant what we needs to change what the last project that we did or the last program we won, what were the strengths? What were some weaknesses? What were there some opportunities that we missed or we didn't capitalize on? And what are the threats for us to be better? And so thank you for being honest. You said it has been a long time. <laughs> and so, so like, it, but it's not too late. You can start today. So that can be your own takeaway that in the next 24 to 48 hours or this weekend, you're going to sit down and do a strength analysis. It's okay, where are we as an organization? This is the mission. This is the vision. This is the objective. These are the goals we want to accomplish this year. Six months is already gone in this year. Where are we? Because one of my other quotes that I love is an unexamined life is not worth living. Again, an unexamined organization, <laughs> it's going to crumble. It's not worth having because, again, there will be so many gaps and loops that when opportunity come, it will be too late for you to fix all of those things. So again, having a SWOT analysis and doing it regularly, at least every three months, is going to prepare you for opportunities because you can catch it. Okay, because again, when opportunity comes, it's already too late to start preparing and planning and getting your things together. So again, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. If you don't even take anything away from what I've said, don't forget that phrase. What can you do right now? How can you assess where, how can you measure, how can you evaluate what you've done? How can you, and then look at yourself, okay, where are we good at? What, and strengths are like wins. Where are you winning? Are you willing in your operations? Are you willing in, in your client manager, in, your, in, in the impact you're giving to the community? How are you winning? That's what we're asking you for in terms of strength. What are you good at? What are the things that if they were to compare with other organizations that does what you do in another city, in another state, you're going to be on top of the top five out of 100. So that's what we mean by your strength. Then what are your weaknesses? What are the, where are the areas? What are the gaps that you need to fill? Where are the places that even though it's one of your core values, your core objectives. You are not doing well. If you were to score yourself on the scale of one to 10, you're scoring lower than five or lower than seven. So what caused those things to happen? How can you fix them? It's not enough to list your weaknesses, but you need to also come up with a plan. How do we fill this gap? How do we close this loop? How do we fill this sinking 
um, O's that we're finding in our processes, in the work we are doing in our program, whether that's your effectiveness or efficient, efficiency in getting things done or delivering results. So what are some of your weaknesses and how are you going to fix that? And so I'll give you an example for us. So for us, when we started our program, we were, we were asking students to come from two to six, but what we did not plan for, yes, so we were good at academics and teaching, but realized that after one month or two months, soon they were Ds, they were not moving ahead. They were still Ds. And our, our projection, our plan, our goal was that within two to three months, these students will move to C minus or C plus or C. And when we did the assessment, they were still D. And like, what was going on? So we had to check in. Okay, we, we, you guys are showing up. We are giving you everything we've got, but you're not seeing results. What is happening? And what we realized was like two major things were, were the weaknesses. When they leave our center, we, are, we don't have control of what happens. So for most of these children, their parents are either doing people that people that um they, they, they have their own business where they work in the market or something. So once they leave us at six, they have to go and meet their parents at their shop. And then they have to go up their parents and work from six to 10 p.m. or something. By the time they get home, they're too tired. They don't have time to review or do their assignments. And then the same circle begins over again the next day so even though they were learning and consuming a lot they didn't have the time to read to study or some of them the issues like there was no electricity in their house and the parents did not have the extra money to buy candy or kerosene for the lanta and so once they get home and it is pitch dark they cannot study and they cannot read and that was it and and so and then another situation was like a lot of our students they have to walk long distance so then you didn't know about them very well our location was in around bodija and then some of them were living in Monia or Jaw, LA, LA, and they will now walk home. It takes them an hour to walk home or something because they didn't have transport fare. And so by the time they get home, they are too tired and exhausted and they just want to eat and sleep. And then, or some of them, they didn't even have food. That was the biggest one. By the time they come to us by 2 p.m., they, they, some of them didn't eat breakfast or they only gave them five naira or ten naira at that point between 2012 and I know a lot of inflation has happened so five naira and ten naira will not do anything this time around if you're living in Nigeria so that was the reality so by the time they get to our center they cannot listen because they, their stomach is grumbling so all they are focusing on is I am hungry even though the tutor is doing his best or our best in front of them they are not listening at all because they're like, I'm just hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. So if we didn't evaluate ourselves, if, if we didn't take the time to do the SWOT of our program, do you think we'll have discovered that? No. So when all of those things came to light, <laughs> we had to know, okay, okay, now we have opportunities. This is, these are opportunities. How can we turn this weakness into opportunities? So we started having conversations with the parents, say, Please, oh, thank you for releasing your children to be with us from two to six, but we need your help further. This is what we need. And then we have to explain to them why it matters that the, the children have time to study at home, why they should give them one hour before they allow them to walk or go come to the shop to learn, to study, to revise their notes, to do their assignment for school and those kind of things. Because before we're not talking to the parents, we, we didn't think they were important in the process, but apparently we needed them as partners to achieve the goals that we had for our, our, our students, our participants at that point. Then we had to now go back and go to our board to say, we need to start serving lunch. We never planned for lunch. Like there was no lunch at all. We didn't think that they needed food. And now that is a big issue that is distracting them from focusing. So we had to change the whole thing. And then we had to create the whole thing. It's okay. Well, some days bread and butter. Some days is white rice with um egg. Some days is eba with ila and fish, whatever. Like, so we created the whole, and then that was required extra money and getting partners and sponsors to help us get it started. And so again, these are this is how you can again when you do a sort analysis, it opens you wide. It helps you to see things clearly. And then it gives you things that you can fix or improve upon so that you can, again, when opportunity comes, you are not like running out of scatter. You know, because again, people, even in grants and sponsorship, they say, okay, tell us what you're doing well. Tell us areas that you need improvement for. Why do you need this money? What would this money do to help you? So again, having a short analysis, you can just copy and paste it. You don't have to start thinking from scratch. Let's say you found out about this opportunity two days before it closed. If you've done this ahead of time, again, better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. 
you can easily just re revisit it, revise it, and use it, and then you don't miss that opportunity as well. Then threat. So threats are okay. What are threats to your progress to achieving your um your organization's goals or mission or your program goals? So for us, the issue of transportation that was a threat because sometimes the even the some and another thing was like attendance started dropping after a few months. And then the reason was because the, the parent did not have the transport fare to, to get some student to the center that we were at. Because again, we're in a location and we had 15 schools, students from 15 different schools coming to us. And so because of that, that was very important to say, okay, you know what? Um, That's a threat. What do we need to do? So we have to create a whole new budget line. So, okay, let's partner with the parents. How much can you afford to give for transportation? Whatever you cannot give, we will also supplement. If it's 25% of the fee that you have, we'll pay the 75%. If it's 50%, of the fee that you have, we will pay the fifty percent. If it's some sixty percent you have, we will cover the forty percent. And so that way, the threat to getting my student to be hundred percent. And once we made all of these three changes, because we did the SWOT and we evaluated ourselves, we got the result that we are looking and even better. And so that's why a SWOT analysis is very important for you as you are um thinking of opportunities that you want to attract for yourself internally or externally then the next part of preparing for opportunities will be attitude there are some attitudes that you need to prepare for opportunities there are attitudes that are needed so first is determination like and it's the question here is are you willing are you willing to commit fully to bringing about what you want it's not enough for you to say this is our goal this is our mission you have to be willing to do what it takes are you willing that no matter the rejection the 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 setback they get are you willing to do what it takes that internal review that's setting up your processes doing the legal requirement registration getting your books in order asking for help calling for volunteer having a job description ready are you willing to do the work like a lot of us, we glorify the work that we do and we really focus on the participant. We focus on the population. But for you to really up your population and maximize what they need, you have to have a structure internally. So you have to determine, you know what, we have to, the foundation must be right. So think of it as building a building. A lot of you, maybe you beat your own house or you've seen, you've seen your parents build house. What do they have to do first? Do they do the roof first? No. Foundation. They dig deep. They dig deep first before they build all the structures and the windows and the all of those other things. Oh, dig deep. So your determination matters. And again, that's part of preparing, doing whatever it takes, the paperwork, no matter how boring, because you might be more of the kind of person that like just like to do the work. You like to be with your population, do the tutoring, do the training, do the inspirational talk. But guess what? Without all those boring stuff, you will not have the funding, the partnership, the opportunity to do that inspirational stuff. So get that one done and be determined to do it well. And again, if you know that that is not your big area of strength, that goes back to who not out. Who else can you get on your team? Who is efficient? Who is excellent at systems and structure and can create that for you, whether as a volunteer, as a staff member? So get that done. Then the second thing is persistence. You have to keep going. So this is the question of, are you willing to commit and think long-term? So again, there will be setback. Think of what I did, said with my own organization. When we first went to the school, they shut us down. They said we couldn't come. If I've given up and said, you know what, I don't care. They shut us down and I get this, discouraged. And I said, you know what, they don't care. They are these people, they are bad people. Do you think we have the impact that we have? Now we have students that have graduated university. They were the first in their family to finish secondary school, first in their family to go to a university, first in their family to have a degree, first in their family to change so many things. Like one of our students just recently graduated. She have graduated two years ago, but thanks to the strike and everything, he finally graduated from OAU. He has finished everything. His graduation is December and many more of those things. And it's wonderful to see them as young professionals, people that are now contributing to the world. So so are you willing to commit and think long term? So no matter the short term setback that you are getting, you need to keep at it. No matter the rejections on your way to achieving your goals, or because even when opportunity comes again, not everything is going to work out and everybody is going to say yes to you. So you have to persist and keep going and keep going no matter what. Then the third thing is patience. You need to be patient with yourself. You need to be patient with your process. Like even when you fail, will you still hold your image and get back up again? Hold the image of the envisioned future that you have for your population. Hold the image of the solution you're hoping to provide, no matter how much 
things are not working out right now. You have to hold that image and keep it, keep at it, even in the midst of all the rubbish that's going. And an example I always like to give again, and as I use the Bible, see, see it as a textbook, not as a religious thing. There's a story in the Bible about David. He and his mighty men, they went to fought, they went and, and fought a war. They came back, but by the time they came back, another country has attacked them and took taking their property, their wives, their children, and all. And at first, his men wanted to stole him, stone him to death, and they were all angry and upset at him. But guess what? They said, David encouraged himself in the Lord and said, you know what, God, should I go after them? Should I pursue them? So again, when you have this big mission, when you have this big vision that you want to accomplish with your organization, your entity, everything is not going to go your way all the time. What are you going to do when things are down? Are you going to be patient with yourself and the process? Are you going to still hold the image and still, again, persist? That's the second one. Keep going. Like, try another plan. Don't just, once one plan falls apart, don't think that's the end. What is the plan B? Create a plan B. Create a plan C. And then be patient with your process. Maybe you thought it was going to happen in six months and now it's taking one year. Fine. You're going to get there. You're going to just keep holding that image of the the vision and the future that you envision for the people that you're serving in your community. Then the next is time. You need to give yourself the time to reach your goal. A lot of us, we underestimate how long it's going to take to get opportunities, to get approved and all. And so you need to give yourself time that, you know what, this is not um, a quick thing. Like this is going to take time and I'm willing to do what it takes. I'm willing to take the time to learn, to unlearn, to relearn, and to build this the right way. And so again, partnership, getting opportunity, it takes time. But again, you have to persist, you have to be determined, and you have to be patient as you go. And then the last one is effort. Are you willing to focus your effort, your attention, and intention to go all in, to reach your goal, and to get to your desired end? You need to, fo you need to focus your effort. Okay, this month, this is the kind of opportunity we are looking for. And then focus on that and say, okay, this is our goal. We're going to reach out to 500 organizations. Guess what? Not all of them will say yes, but at the end of the day, you get 50 or 100 that says yes. So if you want 10 organizations to support you, to sponsor you, to or 100 people to give to you or 20 people to give to you, ask 100 times 5, whatever the number is, and ask those number of people or entity. And then before you know it, you reach your goal. But if you just want five people and you ask five people and all you got was zero, no, 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 no. You've not done anything. That is zero effort in my own opinion. So if you want 10 things, ask 100 people. If you want 20 things, ask 200 people. Because at the end of the day, you're going to get your 20 or more. But if you just ask the 20 that you need, because again, people's timing are different. And so just because you need it now and you have, that doesn't mean that they have it in their budget right now to give to you. So that's why you should expand like your efforts to, to reach above and beyond to reach where you want to go. And um, in closing up, like the six mindset, the six M's that you need um, also as you look for opportunity. One is your mindset. Like you need to think of your, I started this call about your self-image as an organization. We know how important self-image it is for us as an individual. It helps our self-esteem, our confidence. The same thing for your organization. You have to believe over and over in the good that you're creating. You have to believe that you matter. You have to believe that what you do is essential, that you're crucial and you're critical to saving life, transforming community, changing life for the better. So you have to ask yourself, how has the belief that you have about your organization, about being a nonprofit served you? Or how has it sabotaged you? Do you know if your current belief, is it serving the mission and the vision that you're trying to get out to do, then if it's not, how can you reframe it if they're not doing that for you? So your mindset matters. You need to solidify your mindset. You need to believe that you matter. You matter. No matter what the people think about nonprofit, that you are critical, you're crucial. And I want you to think about whose life is going to be affected negatively if you were to close down today. I want that to that to be the way of thinking. That if we don't give our best, if we don't put in giving our heart, who is going to die? Who is going to not become a doctor and end up becoming an arm robber and end up going to jail if we don't exist? If you're not able to do this work, which mother that is currently pregnant right now is going to die 
doing pre um child baths because we we di we didn't do our, our part we didn't do our campaign do our self, um um initiative to educate people about all the things or child mortality rates whatever it is that you're focusing on like i want you to think of the people you're serving and the negative effect it will have on them if you don't exist if you cannot do your work then the second thing is master plan again you need to plan to fail to plan is to prepare to fail you need to plan again and by master plan that means like it's not just one plan like plan a plan b plan c plan, plan a to z like add backup because again like i said your plan a might fail the first day you put it into action i know are you just going to give up no go to plan b so what's the plan to prepare for the opportunity again like i said look at your do you have your legal reg, uh, registration do you have your system in terms of you look you're looking for volunteer or teammates do you have the job description do you have the uh, expectation the target the culture of the organization your values your objective do you have all of those things in place how will you grow yourself daily weekly or monthly to be ready for opportunity that you seek do you have a strategic plan in place for how you manage your day to day so that you you are consciously working towards the opportunity that you want then number three is materials who do you need internally or externally again think of who not how if you assess your own strength you realize okay these are the things i'm good at but these areas i'm weak at it we need other people who else can do it and do it better than you how can you get them on your board on, on, on to volunteer for you to be part of your staff member what do you need who do you need internally or externally what resources are needed to get you from where you are to where you want to be again that's part of doing your SWOT analysis you, you can see it clearly when you do that SWOT analysis as well then number four is mentors you need mentors people that are way ahead of you i come to people that are like five ten years ahead of you in what you're trying to accomplish and it's okay who are the people who have the expertise who have the who who have the knowledge who, who knows people within the industry or the area that or the issue that you're trying to solve how can you learn from them how can you seek their counsel whether that's through book their courses one-on-one -on -one mentoring group coaching whatever that takes how can you do that because again guess what the purpose of mentors is not just to learn from them directly when you work with a mentor and they get to know you they get to understand your passion your mission your vision even when you're not in the room with them when they are in a room and they see opportunity they can speak for you so who are mentors that you need to have in your life or you need to strengthen the relationship that they can speak for you in rooms that you are not there in rooms that you don't have the capacity or the opportunity to be in but they have that assets and when they are there and they see an opportunity that aligns with your mission and your vision they can speak for you and say you know what i know somebody i know a, an organization that will be a good fit for this so that is very important and critical to have as well then the fifth one is models again whatever you're trying to do there's nothing new in this world there are organizations across the world in in different parts of the state or countries that have done it across continent find another organization that can be your model so you know what we are two years or five years into this but there are organizations that have lived for 100 years there are non profit that have been existing for 50 years. There are non profit that has been existing for, think of it like, think of the Girl Scout. If you are aware, if you don't know the Girl Scout, like, go Google them. Girl Scout is an organization. They've been in existence for 50 years or more, and all of that. And guess what? They're a good model. Actually, if you're thinking of income generation, for, like, they have a Girl Scout season. Here in the US, there is winter, fall, spring, um, <laughs> and, um, um wind and summer but there's a season called girl scout season it's like one month or something and they sell cookies they equip five-year-old and six-year-old and upward to go sell cookies and they make millions every single year within three to one month of selling cookies so again there are models for everything you're trying to accomplish so don't just rely on yourself don't just rely on your mentor find organizations that are 20 years, 30 years, or 15 years, or five years, or whatever, ahead of where you want to be. Study them. Read about their history. Study what they are doing. How are they doing this? Like, check them out. And the goal is not to copy them, but to get inspiration, to get direction, to get clarity. Okay, how can, which part of these things can we use for our own setting? How can we implement it to match our own locality and what we are trying to accomplish as well? So you need to learn from the mentors. And then number six is motion. It's not enough to do all of these things. You need to move, take step. No matter how small, no matter how unsure you are, move, take action. What practical steps can you take? Like again, that's why I'm asking you. I don't want you to 
learn, read this, watch this, and then go away and not do anything. Mm -mm. Like, like the Bible says, be the, not just the hearer, but doer of the word. So what can you do in the next 24 to 48 hours? What is one thing that you're going to implement? And this is the, the next part of this position. I like to always make it practical. So we're going to take about three to five minutes. And I want you, I'm not going to speak. I just want you to jot something down. Because again, I want you to write it. I want you to commit. Okay, I am committing to this. Within the next 48 hours, I'm going to work on this one area for my organization and things like that. So what can you do? Right now, what can you do in the next 24 to 48 hours to move you forward? And so this is the exercise that I'm giving to you. It's called the one minute paper. So you have like one to two minutes. And so these are the things I want you to answer. What are the two most meaningful things that you've learned today? And you can share that in the comments as well. But again, more importantly, share it in your own journal, whether it's a digital journal or a physical journal. What are the two most meaningful things you've learned today? What questions remain in your mind? So again, we're about to move to the question and answer section. I'm already seeing some questions and um, our host is going to definitely um, help us to facilitate that um, time. And then the third thing is, what will you do in the next 24 to 48 hours to implement what you learn? If you can just take one thing away from this section, what would that be? And how are you going to do it? So I'm going to go on mute and I'll come back in about two minutes. And then we're going to move to the question and answer. Thank you. So you have two minutes. And please um, do this exercise. Welcome back. I hope that was enough for you to answer these three questions. If you could not answer it, you can take a screenshot of this and um, like, please, but again, do this exercise. And I really want you to do it now because again, you are right in the year. I have your attention right now. So let's get it done. And so again, um, thank you for your time and your attention. And this brings us to the end of the um, teaching um, part of the um this program and now i'll hand it over to our host and we're going to go into our questions um section so for those the questions that have been prepared and the ones that people have asked doing this thank you so much prof omotala the great what a very insightful and pragmatic session we have had um Thank you so much. I love every aspect of today's um, teaching, today's session, and really you have opened our minds to so much possibilities. I love the how you walked us from the opportunities that exist to the, the disposition and the attitude that we must um, we must we must reflect or become you know, in positioning for such opportunities. And then you move further to, again, um, um, instilling in us the six M's, the six M's that are critical to positioning for, to attract, you know, opportunities, whether globally, locally, or across any sphere. So thank you so much, Prof. Motola Degrade, once again. Very pragmatic session and really eye-opening. Thank you so, so much. Prof. Motola, please confirm that you can hear me. Beautiful. Yes, I can hear you. Thank you for That's thanking great. me. <laughs> uh, great, great, great. So we will take, uh, we're, 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 you know, um, 
beautifully um, transited into the question and answer segment and we'll begin to take questions so just before we take our already curated questions i could see already that um, some of our live audience shared questions in the comment section so i would want us to take those questions first before we take on our own questions because you know i'm sure that they are here joining us and it will be really good to take their questions Absolutely. so i i saw a question from um okay i saw a question from eminent i don't know if michael's question was directed to us or it was a rhetorical rhetorical question so michael please confirm whether your question is a rhetorical question or it was directed at prof Omotala. all right so i'll take a question from eminent so she's asking she says how do you find strategic people to partner and are there guides in ensuring that the partnership scales through and benefits both parties effectively? And I think that's a great question. Yeah, absolutely. That's an excellent question. So again, the how-to is to say, okay, do your SWOT analysis. What are you missing? What are the gaps? Then look within your locality. Who has what you need? Whether that's a for-profit, non-profit organization that you can partner in. Who has what you need? Whether it's that is the in-kind donation, expertise, and all of that. So again, do your SWOT analysis, then realize the gap, and then who has what you need? And once you you have those who have what you need, then you can now create a partnership agreement. So, okay, this is what we have to offer. This is what we need from you that we think can complement what we are doing. This is what we are willing to do. This is what the duration is going to look like. This is what we are expecting. So set the expectation. Have it written down. Yes, you can have a meeting, but again, have it documented. And then also, there's also something what they call letter of commitment. So they can also sign a letter of commitment. And then also there's memorandum of understanding. And there are templates and samples that you can Google or search. And then you can, and I'm sure additional through some of the courses, they, they might have some of these already available. And then you can join one of those courses yes, we and do. get that we do. as well. And use that sample to craft your own for your own specific opportunity. But yes, first and foremost, understand the gap, what you're missing, look around you. And then again, ask people. That's why you should talk to mentors to like, like and share with people on social media, advice, email, ask your colleagues, ask your friends. You never know who knows other people. And so, you know, there's this saying that there's like, that we have like five or three level of degree connection to what we need. So again, ask exactly. and ask widely, seek, knock. So it's that principle again, hack, seek, knock. And then when you find those opp opportunity or those partnership, then have a meeting with them, create an agreement, letter of commitment, memorandum of understanding, and then um, yeah. go from there and execute. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Prof. Um, Omoti. Um, There's another question still from um, Eminent, and she's asking, um, she's currently registered as a business name. Would it be better for her to transition into a company or NGO? I'm sure it's it's... I just wanted to, I initially wanted us to take the question, though it's not totally weaved into the topic. Yeah, that's today, fine. But, but it, I think it really be helpful to help exactly address because a business name is just a business name. It's like you're just seeing that nobody else can use this name of your organization. So, like for instance, addition of Africa, nobody else can say the yeah, additional of Africa as an organization in Nigeria. So it just like is a place order. It does not mean anything like in terms of like the only thing it gives you is like, okay, nobody else can use your name for the next 60 days or whatever the duration is as all. Well. But for you to really be taken seriously, yes, you need to make a decision. You want to be a for profit and then have a, a social enterprise component of it. Or do you want to be a non-profit and fully focus on doing good? And that's what you want to focus on as well. And so, yes, a business name is just a placeholder that nobody can use the name. That you're thinking of for your idea but absolutely whether it's a for-profit or non-profit you need to take that next step and definitely register okay great so i'll take a final question from the audience then we can delve into our all our, our other curated questions because they also came in from um, um from other community members so the question goes to us um, this is coming from yinka as a new ngo also newly registered what are the vitals for funding as the data available for a new NGO might not suffice for the requirements of uh, for the requirements for I think funding or international affiliations in order to ease the fund processes. Yeah. She knows, oh sorry, I'm mixing up the questions. So let me take it again. She says, as a new NGO, 
also need registered. What are the vitals for funding as the data available for a new NGO might not suffice for the requirements for funding? That's one question. There is another question that says, does a new NGO require international affiliations in order to ease the fund processes or funding processes? Okay, great. Those are great questions. So to, to the first question, yes. yes. So as a new NGO, grant might not be the first thing. You should not apply for grant yet, except if it's individual grant or if they specifically state that, oh, you, it doesn't matter how long you've been registered or in operation for. For most funders, they want you to at least have established and done work for a year. Some are even asked for two years. So again, read the, read the fine print when you're looking at grants. It's not impossible. You can still get grant as a new one, but you have to read the, it's very limited. Those that allow you um, as newly funded, maybe you're less than one year old. But again, depending on what the, organized funder is looking for and the duration of one, when they want you to be in existence, that will determine whether or not you can assess that. But for a newly formed one, I'll say individual donations, that's one of your biggest ones. That's where you, you can start. And that one does not require any length. Like it's about you talking to people, sharing the mission and asking them to come on board with you. So your biggest effort right now should focus on individual donation. Then corporate sponsorship will be the next one. Then also in-kind donation also will be the three things. Like with, if you're less than two years old as an organization, individual donation, corporate sponsorship and in-kind donation. And maybe like human capacity building, like getting people that are talented and experts that, that can volunteer their time to do the work for you. Those would be my four areas for you to focus on. So I won't say go for grant right now, because again, most grants, they want you to be at least two years in existence and have some things that you've done before um, they really allow that. And then to your second question, like not necessarily, it depends. So for instance, depending on how you frame your organization, are you an international organization? Are you willing to work across the border, across your country, across your continent? If that's the vision, if that's the dream that you have for your organization, then absolutely registering in those countries or continents that you want to work in is important. So for instance, we registered in Nigeria, but we also we are registered in the US. Because again, I wanted us to be, an, and over time we did work in Cameroon. So we registered in Cameroon. At one point we were in Ivory Coast as well. So for every country that we wanted, we, we wanted to feel, because uh, our goal was to work with youth in developing countries across the world or in low community. So that so we're not just limited to Nigeria alone. And then when the pandemic happened, think about it, because again, again, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. We couldn't do things, um, in person so it has to go virtual and virtual open us opportunities to people across the world and so sometimes for funding like if you're going to work in other countries they require at least a basic registration so if it's possible definitely do that and so again go back to your mission go back to your purpose go back to the population you're serving if it's something that is international, that is beyond the locality and the location of your current place or country, then absolutely um, you can do partnership. You, and right here in the US, they have what they call, um, I'm blanking on it, like, it's like a sponsorship where like you, even if you're not registered in the US, they can register for you and get funding on your behalf. Even if you're working in another country, I'll find the name and then I'll send it to you, um, Director Twain, after this. But yeah. the, the, the goal is that you can, they, they will be like a surrogate for you and they help you in, in that process. And so again, go back to your mission and your vision. Let that be your guiding principle. So if it's something that is international, then absolutely, yeah, get the partnership, get the um, relationship going or register yourself if it's possible and go for it. Thank you so much, Prof. Amatola. Very insightful responses given. And thank you again. Thank you for really just pouring yourself into this session. So with, um, I'll just take a last question from Michael and then we we'll delve into our curated questions. So it says, actually, I want to know how social enterprises succeed where governments and corporations fail the people while still relying on their governments and corporations donations do you get a question from yes i got it i got it thank you yet yeah. again excellent questions um that we've been getting and so how do they succeed and again again goes back to again like it's like that idea of don't put all your egg in one basket and so that's why you know i talked about income generation a lot of non-profits we forget about this 
we, yeah, we, it's easy for us to think about government support, corporate sponsorship, donation, and all, and grants. But again, another asset that you have that we underutilize in this sector is income generation. Again, exactly. just because you're a non-profit, you can earn money from what you do. And so yeah. you can create a program, you can charge a fee. You don't have, let's say, a normal for-profit we charge huge amount you can lower your fee whatever works for you that makes sense but you can bring something in and so if you're in that kind of situation where you the government is failing the uh, corporation is failing then my best bet for you is to focus on individual donation talk to people me when i first started my non-profit my mom my dad my uncles they were my first donors like they got tired of me <laughs> at one point but i am so grateful for them so again you again back to that attitude that mindset you cannot be afraid like think about it there are a lot of people that are doing evil in this world like the porn industry is a billion dollar plus business but they are not ashamed it's for all of those rubbish ads to show up on your whatever if you download something wrong like they are so proud of themselves and like so the same way you're trying to do good you're trying to save like you're trying you cannot be ashamed right. of what you're trying to do yes. so if people that are selling bad drugs they're selling prostitution and all kind of terrible things are proud of themselves why you a change maker you a social savior will not be ashamed and feeling somehow about trying to project your value and the good you're bringing to the community so if you're in that kind of situation people are going to be your best friend rely on people every opportunity you get talk and speak and i'll give a quick example i'm so sorry i forgot to mention it during my chat but if you've had me before so something happened to me after i moved back to nigeria i studied here in the us i went back to i came back to nigeria to run my non-profit and needed to open a bank account and there was no um like i had to go to g it was gtp bank and they just first but i had to go like for six months almost every week but there was a guy in at the front who we had to like sign in or something during that period before we can even get the paper we need to fill the document and i'll to cut the long story short anytime i seen was a young graduate and and i was like this would be a good role model for our students so i wanted him to come and come and speak to our students but he never volunteered for us but i never i never stopped talking about my non-profit the work we're doing so six months to more than a year later these guys still remember me so an opportunity came up and i'm sharing this not to brag but because we're talking about preparing for opportunity so preparing for opportunity speaking like having your own um two minutes like elevator speech ready or impact statement about who you are what you do as an organization to cut the long story short this guy there was an opportunity for who want to be a millionaire, but they were doing a special segment who deserve to be surprised. This guy used his own money and kept putting my name in over and over again until they chose me as one of the candidates to come to Lagos to be on who want to be a millionaire. And then to cut the long story short, that's how I got 50 million naira from MTN. Just because of this guy, he never volunteered. He never it's gave to my organization, oh. but he never forgot me. He never even though he could not give at that point when i was every time i go on every weekend but because he never forgot me he never forgot the impression i made and the passion and what i was trying to do so when an opportunity arises, i was not even in the country i didn't watch i didn't used to watch want to be a mirror i didn't know that there was anything like that he was the one that was now the person who saw the opportunity and said this person this girl will be. and i didn't have his number I did not like he never gave me his number nothing but because he still had my record in there he got everything and put my name and my number in and that was how they contacted me and that was how i got this opportunity to win 50 million naira in during that period and be be that part of the person that won that money for the work i do so again that's a an example so even when government and and corporation fails you can always count of people like people are driven, people are emotional. So don't ever feel afraid or shy about what you're trying to do and the good you're trying to create. And then again, income generation will be the next one for me beyond people and donation is like, okay, what can you do? What problem can you solve that you can do on a large scale with the resources, with the talent that you have, with the expertise that you have that can bring money in to help you to support the work you're doing. So that will be the two things I will say you should focus on and that can even bring more opportunities in the long run. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. Again, the emphasis is on the fact that as social entrepreneurs and NGO leaders, we must be entrepreneurial in our strategy. 
we must always carry an entrepreneurial mindset in how we build and how we position for impact. So thank you so much, um, Prof. Matola, for the beautiful insight shared thus far. So let's get into the questions quickly. I'll be taking a question, you know, first speaking to grant writing. So as a grant writer, what unique value can social enterprises or NGOs bring to the table? How can they articulate this value proposition clearly in grant proposals and funding applications to attract opportunities? Thank you. Again, um, when it comes to grant or grant writing and all, again, documentation is so key. And that's where I see a lot of people miss opportunity. Like they don't have the right structure in place. They don't have their organization charts. They don't have like financial statements that is consulted and is audited and ready so that when the opportunity comes to apply for them, because beyond just the grant application that you're submitting, you need documents. They ask for other things, other attachments. And so they'll ask, who are your board members? They want to know their information. They want to know about your organization structure. And they want to know your job description. They want to know um, your registration status. They want to know your financial capability. They want to see your financial statements. How have you done in the last one year or last year? Do you keep a record, excuse me. And so again, so that's one of the critical things that you need to really like focus on because even if you have write a wonderful, perfect proposal, without this other documentation, you're going to miss the opportunity. They'll rather give it a structure of organization that has every other document than you that just have this inspirational story and inspirational plan, but your structure is rubbish. Your structure is nothing. And so for you, you need to have structure you need to create structure i know that documentation is boring but i promise you the boring stuff makes the difference the boring stuff can be the like line between whether you get some an opportunity or not and so with grant writing that's the biggest pet thing. so make a checklist like let's say like think of act foundation let's use that as an example right they have something that is closing on july 31st i believe and so go and read their website create a checklist and write down these are the things that they need beyond just the submission i'm doing do we have any of these documents and all these materials that they're asking for because if you don't have that no matter how perfect and wonderful what you're trying to accomplish they are not going to trust you with their money they're not going to want to partner with you or give you the opportunity to use this fund to go do out, do the mission you want to do. So again, documentation, documentation, documentation. That is going to be your best friend when it comes to grant and seeking grant opportunity. You need to do the boring stuff. You need to do the basic stuff first. And from if you can get that done, then you can do the inspirational stuff too. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Prof. Matala. And in just aligning with what um, Dr. Matala shared, I would encourage everyone tuned in, or we will tune in much later, to just visit um, our the Ideation of uh, Social Innovation School. You can click on the link in our bio on our, any of our social media platforms. Just, you know, um, I'm, it's scrolling on the screen at the moment, and you would see that there are lots and lots, lots and lots of an array of courses that line up with how you can build structurally and also build sustainably. So I implore you to just leverage those opportunities quickly. All right, riding on, I'm taking on the question that speaks to um, how can social enterprises and NGOs align their mission and goals with the, with the funding priorities of potential grantors and donors? How can they tailor their applications to showcase how their organizations directly address the needs and interests of the funding organizations? Great, great question as well. So I would like to flip flop it in one way. So I'll say first and foremost, don't you ever change your mission and vision just because you want to get somebody like this, exactly. these organizations, whatever. Don't you ever do that first and foremost. First thing you should do is like, again, it's a partnership. It's like, think of it as like you are interested in, it's a marriage, right? And you're committed to each yes. other. So you won't marry somebody that you don't like. You won't marry somebody that doesn't hold the kind of value system that you have in terms of raising children and other things like that, right? So exactly. the same when it comes to grant funders and corporate sponsors, I know it might look like, oh, and, and that's also thinking in scarcity mindset. If you think that, oh, you always have to change Exactly. your mission and your vision 
there is more than enough. Remind yourself, say to yourself, write down, like there is more than enough. There is more from where funding comes from. Yes. There's more funders, more corporate sponsors that are, and you're going to find your own people. So don't ever let scarcity mindset get you into trouble. Because yes, some people do that. And any funding, they try to tailor it. And no, first and foremost, look at what the funder is looking for. Go through their website, look at their mission, their vision statement, look at their area, their teams. Exactly. Most of them have a team. We care about healthcare, we care about children, we want to focus on skill development. They will give you like three to four or five things. Is there anything in any as an organization? You might do different things, you might have four programs. They might not be able to fund all four exactly. programs. Look at your own program. Okay, uh, we have a program for health, we have a program for children, we have a program for mentoring. Which of these of our program align with any of this strategic area that this organization is exactly. interested in? If they are not, move along, find something else. Don't ever change what you stand for just because you want to get this. Because guess what? You're going to suffer. It's going things are going because. Things can change. Things can think of it, the economy. Think of what has happened in Nigeria in the past six months. We've changed government. We've changed leadership. Inflation, naira and to dollar. Everything is just so. A lot of things can change. So you have to and do what you love. Like don't ever um like like sort of like go down on your mission because you just want the money. Because I promise you, like exactly. it's going to be very painful because you, you're going to be in agreement with these people yeah you have to do what you said you're going to do and if you don't do it some funders might request exactly. for their money back even though you've spent it and you have to now be personally yes. liable for it and so again take your time yes. there are perfect fit funders for yes. you it's like there are it is possible so again it goes back to the mindset exactly believe that it is possible and then be willing to do the work again that's why i talk about the attitude patience persistent don't do don't wait for quick answer or quick things like think long term and ask yourself if this is the kind of partner i want exactly. to get in bed with for five years for 10 years for 50 years to come is this the kind of people i want to find logo my organization's name to be joined together because everything that that we do now is living on uh, online right is this the kind of organization i want yes. to be tied to for a long time so if your mission does not align if your area of expertise your area of the population yourself don't try to change yourself to fit their mode you're exactly. not it will not work you might get in and they might fund you but to carry out the work to do the work and then you're not going to now destroy your reputation and then nobody will trust you. And then you don't know. Funders talk to each other. They connect with each other. And then you're going to be on their blacklist, but you don't know. Then you keep applying. And nobody, because of this one little thing that you did, that you thought that, oh, let me just do this because we need money. But again, don't compromise your value. Don't compromise your mission just exactly. because of money right now. So again, take your time. And if you don't know how to do it, get expert. Enroll in with addition of find people who can do it for you who has the time who have who have the expertise and who can do it for you and you can spend the money if you don't have the time to do the research and do a deep dive into finding but there are partners that fit your mission so don't you ever think that they are not in let's say the grant is not working out again that's why there are multiple options grant is not the only way to fund yourself there are other options. Maybe you need to focus right now for the next six to one year on individual donors. Maybe that's what you, yes. you need to focus on and build down because that one, the possibility are endless. You can get people's attention, exactly. their ways and strategies to make it happen. And so that would be my um, my answer to that. Thank you so much, Dr. Omotala. So um, are there specific trends or emerging opportunities in the social impact space? that organizations should be aware of and leverage in their positioning efforts. Absolutely. So one of the biggest one, and I think it, it, every year it doesn't change and it keeps, opportunity keeps increasing, will be the SDG goals. So you know there are SDG goals exactly. and, and you need to look at all of these different goals and say, okay, where do we fit in our mission, in our vision? And then, so look at that. And then there are funders and people that are interested in funding these areas as well. Then another thing also you can do is like you can look at okay what is happening in our world is there an increase in this issue in on the news what do we keep hearing more of and more of and what is this issue so as you look for look as you so again your sdg goes find a way to align are you in is, is your mission and your vision in, in alignment with sdg go one or two or three or four or five or ten whatever it is at least no more than three don't overdo it like again like three focus area is good if you can find three sdg goals that your organization can align with that's one and then you can search for 
opportunities that are related to those SDG goals. And then again, look in, into your news, newspaper, social media. Okay, what am I hearing more of? What are the trends in education? If you're focusing, so look for trend in your industry or in the population that you're serving or the problem you're trying to solve as well. Because in those trends, in those problems, there are solutions. There are people that want to fund it. Another one is to think of exactly. partnership. So another one is I like, think of like academias. Like so, I I I teach um during the fall and um spring semester and sometimes some people only want to fund researchers they want to they want me as a professor to go do research it's okay we are seeing this issue of um anxiety in children so they're willing to give me money but i may not have access to the population but you as the non-profit you have access to the population access so you can partner with researchers so you are going to provide them with the candidates but they provide the funding to do that research and that research is your project is your program already you're already doing the work but you're not doing it in an academic way you're not doing it to do publication but you can now partner with those ones and so look into academics look into people that are researchers that are professors uh, or lecturers that are doing research in the area that you're focusing on and see what funding is available and that's another opportunity for partnership and again imagine if they can create a case study out of the work you're doing. So you not only really get the money to do the program, but you get to test it on an academic level that this thing is tested. We evaluated like the result is great. They are making a difference. They are reducing anxiety or health, or they are increasing on uh, employment and reducing unemployment in youth and young adults. And so you get two for two. You get the, uh, so you get the prestige, you get the, um, the money and you get to do the impact work as well. Brilliant. Thank you so much, um, Prof. Matala, for again highlighting the trends and how you can position al alongside, you know, current happenings around us. So how important is storytelling and branding in the process of positioning for opportunities or positioning to attract opportunities? How can um, change makers and social innovators tell their stories in their proposal writing or grants and uh, proposals and in what are some effective ways for organizations to communicate their mission impact and value proposition absolutely thank you those are like pregnant with <laughs> one question but pregnant with many more so um let me try yes. and take it one at a time so i'll say first and foremost storytelling very key again like most people they rather listen to story than facts and statistics alone. So again, I always tell people when you're doing stories, tell a story of one. Don't try to say, please help us to say 50 children. Like it's for some people, they're like, I already have 1,000 naira to give. How is my 1,000 naira going to help 50 children that need this? So again, make it simple. Keep it to one person. Help us to help Shade or John or Sheyi or whatever the name is, or Michael or Doi or Inka or David. Like your 1000 era can go a long way because again a lot of people human beings like people they take themselves out of opportunity to give to donate because they're like my 1000 era cannot do a lot they want to help 300 children so again when you are doing your storytelling as much as yes your goal is 300 target as for the children you want to serve focus on one story this is how you're going to change the life of this person in this instant. We all break down what you need. Let's say the total project is going to cost 25,000 or 50,000 or $100 or whatever. Break it down. Like, okay, $5 is going to go towards this. One, 200 naira is going to go towards this. So that people can say, okay, okay I am not be able to pay 25,000, but I have 5,000. They can use it to buy this shoe or whatever exercise book they need for this child as well. So again, as much as possible keep it simple and break it down transparency be accountable because you've just said we need hundred thousand but you don't tell them what the hundred thousand is doing now it's going to make a difference in your in the people that you're serving it's they're going to lose it because again not, not everybody can give you hundred thousand right now but some people have one thousand they have five thousand but when you break it down people that can see themselves in it another one is to like also share your own personal story why does it matter to you you can again you can have yes. chosen to do anything else with your life why did you choose this? Like for me, I also people, I was in the public school system. I knew what it was like to not have teachers for, for I used to pay money from my friend that were attending private school to borrow their notes for the classes we didn't have. And I knew that not everybody has the opportunity to have friends in private school or can even pay for notes and or textbook. And so that was one of my own reasons why I said my nonprofit that I want to make it easier. 
for students in, in public school to have access to what they need to get the basic education and succeed and thrive. So tell your story. Why does it matter if there's a personal connection, something that happened to you? I had a client one time that the reason why she started a nonprofit that focused on child um preg pregnant women and mortality was like she almost died and her son almost died during pregnancy. And that experience, that experience, even though it was traumatic for her, was one that inspired her and felt like, you know what, this cannot, she started studying and realized that like more than 50% of women died in child, but because of something that could be preventable. And that's how she created her own nonprofit. And she shares her story and she shares the picture of her son, how they had to stay in the ICU for three months before they can bring him home because of all the complications that happened and what she felt when she almost, so again, stories are powerful. It can move people. Yes. And then again, related to the, situation we, like if you're talking to a parent find a way to connect your story and what can you do to, to them like imagine it's your child and they don't have food to eat imagine they are your child and they don't have access to education or they are denied education because of their gender so or in, imagine it is you or let, let them be able to connect it to something that is relevant to their own life so again when you're doing so it's not about you it's about the person you're talking to and, and if you're talking to a student yes. like the same thing that you the, the way that you're that you're going to connect to a parent is different from somebody that is single like and so again like so that's why you, yeah. like even if you are working with 50 participants craft their story craft like five different stories so that for different um population that you're speaking to different audience you can relate to them in different ways i gave you an example during my talk about my own self personally i gave you about the partnership with like organization yes. like so so find um opportunities that like stories mm -hmm. like find find ways in your stories to connect to the reality of people help them relate it to something that is relevant break it down don't use jargons and keep it simple keep it simple, simple. And, and then the ways that you can share it's like you can do videos you can do stories you can do audios and like a uh, voice over to like an image or something and just share and ask people to contribute and ask questions if they don't know if you're trying to raise awareness as well and so this, those would be some of the um things and again don't be afraid to share you never mm -hmm. know think about me like i was yes. asking the guy to volunteer and then from there he connected me to a bigger opportunity that i never i would never exactly. have even know about and so again never ever be ashamed to share about what you're doing and the value and so again craft a two minute or one minute pitch it's okay my name is this this is my organization this is our mission and this is how we are changing the world this is how we're changing our community this is how we are impacting the life of children affected with this issue so be very specific about what you're trying to solve the solution that you're proposing and how they can partner with you to help you to make it happen brilliant i love it and that's 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 what the power of storytelling does well, that's what it does. That's the, the effect, the radical effect it has on those who tune in to listen because um, 100 persons can listen in to just one story, mm -hmm. but 100 persons are extracting 100 insights from that one story. And that Absolutely. is how powerful mm -hmm. storytelling can be. So thank you so much, Dr. Matala, for laying emphasis on that. So we're rounding off. Uh, it's been an exciting almost two hours spent within the social impact webinar studio and we are so excited to have really drawn from the stream of dr motala and to really really just expand our capacities and um what the possibilities that exist so finally just then just like i have before i have you take you know your final charge um prof motala I will be I'm asking a final question and the question is along the lines of um, how can uh, organizations social enterprises and NGOs showcase the I, I know we've spoken about um, the power of storytelling and of course branding and maybe you can sort of um, lay emphasis on the principle of branding as I as I ask this question. So how can organizations effectively showcase their track record achievements and impact to build credibility and attract partnerships or funding opportunities, leveraging the principle of branding? Thank you. That's a really great question. And give me one second. I really I want to show something to just um but I'll talk why I'm trying to pull it up and share it uh, um, on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So like 
it's very simple again the idea is to keep it simple right and so yes. um i want to show you two examples of how you can do that and it doesn't cost a lot of money or time and money. energy as well to do. and so there's this thing called a one pager and so this is one way that you can showcase your value and so this is like how like you you can talk about what you do in numbers and so um i want to show you one that we used to use for our own organization so it's called gsa it. one pager and then I, I will talk about the principle of what how to do it and why it matters. So one second, DSA, one page. Yeah. It's okay. It's a really good question. I have it open. Yes. I just want to upload it. Um, yeah, it's fine. See? Yes, and it's then fine. Uploading and then so you can we yes, it's fine. So let's hear from our live audience. It's been an insightful webinar. So please pop up your comments in the comment section. Let us know how um how this webinar has been for you share your highlights share your light bulb moments in the comment section we would love to read from you over to you prof Motala. thank you okay great so so this is one uh this is a fat sheet and so basically it just talks about our over overview and so it it gives you like information about okay this is what we've done this is our mission this is our vision so like in one page we basically showcase what we are doing how we are making a difference um to people um, in our community and to the population that we are serving. And so that's an example of one way that you can definitely um, sort of like brand yourself. So again, oh, you can also do an impact statement. So at the end of every year, like it's very important to be able to say, okay, this is what we've done in one year. This is how we've changed life. This is how we've transformed our community for the better. And so can you show, show that to say, you know what, this is what we are doing and this is how we've been able to do this and this is what this look like um, as, as we go forward. And so that's one example. So like if you, I, I think it stopped showing, but yeah, you can see it. That's one example of a one page, yes, that you can do. So it has like, okay, we have an adopt a school program. We have a scholar program. We have a mentorship program. We have like viewed in a box. So on this one page, we talk about ourselves. It has our logo. We show the picture of the range of different students in different uniforms because we serve students from different schools that comes to our center to, to come and be with us. And so that's one example of doing that. And then the other one, which I'm going to quickly pull up right now is, is just like what numbers, using numbers, if numbers is better. But again, you can connect the numbers to stories. And so this one basically um, sort of like shows you, um, one second, I'm sharing. Let me know if you can see, it should be open. Can you see that? It's okay. Yes, yeah. you can. So, so this is what, like, so this is in numbers. So we talk about, okay, like, you know what, these, in this year in 20, 13, over 3,000 plus students applied and really had 150 spots just to show that, you know what, the need is great and the resources is few. So again, can show the numbers just like, you know what, right now there are over 500 children that are out of school in our community. And our goal is to at least get 100 students in school by the end of this one year time that we are going on. Then we talked about, okay, this is how many schools are represented, 19 public schools. Uh, we only accepted 1% because that's all we have the funding for, okay? There are six cities that, that we were operating in, two countries that we were operating in, 12 different tribes were represented in the students that we were serving. 15, our scholars have been able to do 15 community service. They've never done community service until they came to us. Like four universities have been attending, like students have been able to go to four universities. Students have never been to universities before. They'll be the first in their family. Two countries were um, uh, uh, represented that they've gone to. 80% um, have taken on leadership positions. So you can use the numbers. So this is the number. So you can look at this fact and use that to say, you know what, this is what um, this look like for us. So numbers can be another way that you can sort of brand yourself and say, you know what, this is how we are making a difference. This is how we are changing things for the better. And this is the way that we are um, changing changing lives and, and, and affecting change in our communities as well. Then also, it's also important to invest in um, professionals. Again, like I said, like invest in, like it's really for you because again, you can reuse this over and over and over again. So again, always think of excellence. Like, you know what, if, if you want this thing to last, so find the time. If you're not good at it, find somebody who can do it or invest in Canva Pro, whatever it is, if you want to do it yourself, but do it well. And so invest in it because branding makes sense. Because most of the time, people only hear the people that makes the most noise. So your That's brand right. be a way 
to attract that as well because like like so you need to make noise with it because again like i said there are millions of people that or millions of things that are fighting for funders attention partnership att attention exactly so your branding and you have to be consistent you are going to use red stick to red for as long as possible in all of your information your branding your logo your everything your website like so you're known for it like there's this guy called what's his name debola lagos like i know some of you might know him or i've heard of him what is the signature thing for him red cap anything where yeah. he goes he's always wearing red cap so anybody when they see what comes to mind whenever i see something like I, this is like this person is like debola lagos or something like and so that's something like now think of um gdk uh, uh the the warrior for this uh, organization and many more for yes. her she does most of it like, she likes different colorful glasses and so that's something else that is now a signature thing to her or you know that every single year every quarter ddk is always giving gifts it's like gift is our yes. love, love language to people so again as yes. an organization find something unique about yourself and then use that to now build like uh a like take space in people's art Think of wow. apple when you think think of all of this coca-cola what do you think of when it comes to coca-cola so think of the brands that you love the brands i think of mtn what are and then also it's not just about pictures and words and all think of like your mantra your tagline what is exactly coca-cola known for what is yes apple known for what is samsung known for think of nike what is nike known for just do it right and so for us as and our own NGO, our own is breaking barriers, igniting possibility. So that has never changed for us since we started. That's our goal. We want to break the barriers that stand in the way of progress for young people, for youth. And then we want to ignite possibility. We want them to know that it is possible, that it, their background does not equal their future. That's what our mantra stands for. So even as students, it is installing them. Then we also have a creed. Everybody that becomes a student of us, they have to know the creed. They have a scholar creed that they have to know and memorize and they have to recite before they leave for the day. Because again, we want the self image, we want them to project, even though their environment, when they leave our own um, setting, is going to be bad. But they will never forget what they were coming from. And no matter how yes. much situation is, we want them to remember that mindset, that mantra of like, you know what? I can achieve anything. My background does not equal my future. There's, yes. again, as an organization, you need to build that identity. Again, see yourself as an individual. You are, you are, not, you are a living being as an institution. So you need yes. to build that character. You need to cover yourself in ways that you can stand out and be a signature person. No matter how many thousand nonprofit that is doing the same thing, you're doing it. They can know you for that. They, you can be known for that and you're known for that as well. And so there are different ways that you can do that across yes. different medias, whether it's social media. Me, I have a signature. Whenever I sign up, I, I was saying for the greater and common good. So anytime I sign up of something, I have an assistant that helps me with my email. She doesn't sign up for the greater and common good. So if you don't see anything for the greater and common good, that means it was an assistant that sent that email and used my my own email. So again, you can do literally things that people can notice. And then from there, it, they become familiarized with your brand or with your organization and you are known for it as well. Then also it can be like what you do, be consistent. Every year, if you're going to do a program, yes. if you can only do it well, once a year, then do it. Yeah, look at addition of they have the social impact webinar every single month, and so that is something that they are known for, right? And they have other things that they are known for, like you know what they, they do this every. They have a masterclass things every two years or every two years, like so they, you can build that. You don't have to do everything at once. Take the time again. Slow down to speed up. Take the time. Understand your value. Understand what you want to project to the world, the image you want to bring, and then build it. Be patient with yourself. That's part of the attitude we discuss. Be patient and then put in the effort, put in the time, and before you know it, you're going to be a brand name. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Prof. Matella, for the profound insights shared thus far. Thank you for such a very enriching and really high eye-opening session. We are really grateful um, for the gifts of you. Um, please let your comments come in, let your gratitudes and appreciation come through in the comment section. Let's show our appreciation for Prof. Matala, you know, thoughts for and how she has really impacted to everyone tuned in this afternoon. Um, Prof. Matala, just before we round up, I would want you to just give us your final charge 
you know, in just one minute um, in terms of how, you know, all of our amazing ecosystem members, change makers, impact driven individuals, development practitioners, social innovators, how they can position to attract global opportunities. So I'll say, I was like, again, my first time will be again, I am not impressed that you're listening or that you attended this and stayed the whole two hours. What are you going to do with what you've learned? What is one thing that you can activate in the next 24 to 48 hours? Because again, like it's about space repetition over time. You need to do this. Like you have to work the most. Even the Bible says, faith without work is what? Dead. So you had faith that you're going to learn something. That's why you invested your time, your network, your data to be here or to watch this and stream this later, right? But again, what will you do? What the work part is where I see a lot of us feel as social um, um, entrepreneurs and also as social good engineers yeah. and as um, NGOs as well. It's like, we are not willing to do the work. We, we, we chicken out. We say that, well, because I'm a non-NGO, then you don't do the right thing. No, raise the standard raise the standard stop lowering the standard for you because i'm just an ngo because we're an ngo you just do things anyhow no create a structure for yourself if it's just one hour that you can spend on your impact work on your ngo your social enterprise every single day do it craft that time it doesn't matter whether you're a parent i am a parent i have two children now they are awake my husband has been at work since 5 a.m my children are already up, but they have a protocol i have a system in place they know that when i'm training they cannot come out they have their tabs already there's a place i put their tab they know what to do they need to go and learn something on one of their learning things and so they're in their room i can hear a bit of them but that's what they are doing because again so you know say because i'm i wake up early like i wake up at least three hours before my children because I know that, okay, this thing is important to me. I'm going to make the time for it. I'm going to delay gratification of sleeping just to make sure I make progress in this thing that I say I care about. And so again, create structure for yourself. Stop looking for structure outside of yourself. You are the, um, the, the main thing. You are the only, you can control what you can do. So you have a lot of control. So what are you going to do? Are you going to invest in the growth of your organization, in reaching the mission and saving the life and transform and start with you, do the work. It's not enough to have faith and to hope and believe and pray. Again, do the work. Faith without work is dead. You've had faith, you are here, you've listened, you've taken notes. Now go activate it. And so that'll be my, uh, my, my last name. And then so that, that's my last thing. And again, I wish you the best of luck. Again, I believe in each and every one of you. I know that this can add this industry, but it is not impossible. Again, you could have chosen to do anything with your life. You're choosing to commit part or all of your life to this. If God has given you the dream, yes, like, then it's going to resource you. And the resources are available. You just have to activate exactly. And that starts by asking, seeking, knocking. You started by being here, but take it further. Do the work do the work keep pushing exactly. be persistent be determined and don't give up never be ashamed of this industry never be ashamed of what you're doing and any opportunity you get exactly talk to people share with them about what you're doing and how they can join you and partner exactly. with you to make change happen so thank you for your time and your attention and i'm open to hear wonderful news find me any of on the any of the social media platforms and say hi this is what I'm doing or this is what I've done. And if you have further questions, let her host know exactly. they, they know how to reach me and I'm happy to always um, do a follow-up. Thank you so much, Prof. Matala. Wow, wow, wow. Again, get ready to do the work. Pull off your sleeves and get into doing active, active work. And I love how Again, the, the fact that the, the, I love how you emphasize the fact that you have the locals of control. So take charge, take charge. Thank you so much, Prof. Omatola. And of course, we implore you. I must also mention that Prof. Omatola is one of our faculty members within the Social Innovation School. So get into the school, get into on board um, the school itself, and just interact with the different courses on the platform. And I'm sure there are courses you can definitely sign up. And I can say that um, um, Prof. Motola has also has some exciting programs coming up that we will share with you um, in the course of the weeks to come. So definitely look out for those announcements in our newsletter as we push that out as well. And we also have programs, very juicy programs and initiative loading up for all of you. We're here to serve you and 
we continue to heed to your needs and to you know the areas you're seeking more clarity more alignment and how you can be out and how you can sustainably build you know not for the now but for the future so thank you so much to everyone tuned in subscribe to this youtube channel if you're on linkedin live we say hi to you hello to you subscribe also to our company page on linkedin also follow us across all of our platforms as well prof Matala, do you want to share your um, social media details if yeah absolutely would love to connect yes so you can, so you can share how they could connect with you thank you thank you for the opportunity so you can always connect with us either on linkedin facebook instagram and now threads on uh, at the funding exactly. magnet and so if you go to at the funding magnet you can find me and you can send a message say hi say hello we will always respond to you and we're always happy to again share or um support you in any way but yes at the funding magnet that's how you can reach me and um yes looking forward to hearing from you and again do the work like i really believe that the success that we want the result we want want is is in the work we are not doing like just so you know what for the next five months like let's say july is over we have five months left right in this year yeah it's still possible to get funding it's still possible to fully fund your program but it's going to require work so for the next three months double down create the structure create the schedule and then figure out do your SWOT analysis and then walk and building brick by brick brick by brick and i promise you if you're persistent if you're determined if you're patient if you put in the time and the effort exactly you're going to get the result. It's like a farmer putting seed in the ground, right? Season change, but I promise you, whether it's maize that they're planting or cocoa, if they do the work and they, they continue on it, what happens? They get the harvest. So it's the same thing that yeah. applies to our organization and the vision that we have as well. Do the work, plant the seed, cultivate it, remove the weeds, fertilize it, um, water okay. it, over time, you're going to reap multiple harvests. But if you don't start digging, if you don't start planting, you're not going to get any harvest. So the one exactly. that is not due, then that's the result. So again, and then if you need, ask for help. Again, that's why the fertilizer exactly. exists. Fertilizers are mentors. They are institutions like Hydration Hub that they already have. Yes, that's why we exist. Houses. Exactly. So implement it, use them, get the resources. And I promise you, yes. if you implement those things your, your result is going to be exceptional one year from now six months from now you can be yes. in a totally different place and the opportunities will, like you have to be the one saying like no thank you we are not ready for this opportunity yet no thank you please we have to do a wait yes. list imagine that it is possible yes. we're getting start now so thank you again thank you Thank you so much, Prof. Matala. So we look forward to receiving a curation of your testimonials, you know, as an accept, as a, as a, as a fruit, you know, harvest from this session and many of our programs, webinars, or past sessions that have been held. Thank you once again to everyone tuned in this afternoon. We look forward to you joining us at the next edition of the Social Impact Webinar. Watch the space for many announcements. Many, many great stuff are in the works. Something big is coming. Keep your fingers crossed. You know, let your expectations be heightened and just look forward. And more importantly, take action. Apply the knowledge that you've garnered. Take action and let your, the knowledge garnered speak through your works. So thank you. We're proud of each of you, all of our ecosystem members, and we say go out and do great exploits. So we'll see you next time at the August edition of the Social Impact Webinar. Bye for now.